Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys a Ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos, selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. All right, so the driver's screen is a 12.3 inch uh, all digital screen and it is part of the new MBUX system. So there are some things that have changed uh, from the previous version. Uh, in the previous version, you could change things within the gauges. You can't do that anymore. Uh, so uh, I kind of like that feature. I'm kind of sad that's gone away, but it's an incredible system nonetheless. So. Uh, in the center between the two gauges, of course, you've got your driver's information stuff, your radio, your phone, your navigation, that kind of stuff. Down below that, of course, you've got a clock, you've got outdoor ambient temperature, and your gear selector. Uh, in the uh, miles per hour gauge on the left, you do have your uh, fuel gauge at the bottom, as well as how many miles you have left to empty, and then the little arrow indicates which side your gas tank is on. And then on the, over on the right on the RPM gauge, you have an EQ charge, um, whether you're using power or taking power uh, from the battery part. So that is on the bottom of the RPM gauge. And then of course you do have your gear selector at the very, very far right. And then your drive mode is the C that's highlighted in light blue. The red park indicator just indicates that your parking brake is set. Up above, of course, you got your digital speedometer and then, of course, a bunch of dummy lights that can come on. I think it's interesting uh, that the speedometer is in miles per hour and then right below the digital miles per hour in the middle of the screen, you see the, where it says zero kilometers per hour, it puts both of them in there. That's kind of a, that, that's a neat feature. Okay, to control the information on this screen, you're going to use the left side of the steering wheel and you're going to use the back button, the four arrows here, and the home button. Okay, and they are touch sensitive. They're not actual physical buttons here, you, but you do need to give them a little bit of a push. You will feel a little haptic feedback, like a little click, uh, which is nice. Now, we are in the, currently in the classic view. You can go to sport view, press OK, get a very, very different dash. You can click on home again, go to understated, so it, just gets rid of a lot of information. Even your miles per hour and your RPM gauge, um, or e even your uh, miles per hour um, only shows up till 20 and it won't light up until you get up closer, then, then the numbers will light up for you. And then over on the far right, you've now got a clock. All right, or press the home button here. We're gonna swipe over and you have the assistance screen. So this will be your cruise control, lane keeping assist, uh, that kind of stuff. We'll be right in this screen. I'm gonna press home again. And then you can go over to service and then it'll give you all the information that you see in the screen, which is a lot. You got your, over on the far right, you got your coolant temperature, your engine oil, and then your PSI, the temperature of the tires, um, and then your, when, when your service A is. And of course it tells you if there's an alert on the top left. All right, so I'm gonna click the home button here and I'm gonna just go back to the classic view, okay? Now, uh, in the home screen here, um, this is your media. So if I use the, the swipe function on this okay button here, I can change the radio stations now, if I go swipe up, I've got several other screens in here. Okay, here's the attention assist system, which just comes on and monitors if it thinks you're sleepy or not paying attention and suggests you take a break. If I swipe up again, you've got consumption. Swipe up again, you have eco display. It'll rate you on your driving. Boy, I do bad on that one. All right, uh, from reset here, um, this is the last time it was reset. You get your miles per gallon, your miles per uh, average miles per hour. These are all a okay, averages there at the top, and then you, how far you've gone, how many hours it's been driven. Of course, uh, keep in mind that this car is mostly done idling, so it doesn't show great gas mileage. It does get better than that. And then a uh, the little um, EQ gauge below that tells you how many miles you've gone on EQ and how many hours you've driven on EQ. 
Now, if I go up again, here it tells me the same information, but from when I started the car. If I go up again, okay, so then on this screen, I believe the top number is your is a, just a, a trip meter and the bottom number is the odometer. All right, if I swipe up again, I am back to media. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button here, and if I do that, it just goes right back and forth between the last two screens. Now, if you wanna set something as a favorite, kind of, you can click and hold the okay button, and it sets a shortcut, and I wanna say uh, yes. Okay, then I can use this button. So let, let, let's say I'm in another screen. Let's just go to another screen. I can use this button to jump right to it. Okay, so that, that's, that's really cool. Now, um, on the cruise control here, let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll see what that looks like here. And I think I probably have to have it in gear. Okay, and then we're gonna go to home for a minute and we're gonna go right over here to assistance. Okay, and I am going to see if I can because I'm not moving, it's not going to set, of course. Okay. Um, but you got your on, your off, you've got your resume, and you've got your cancel right here. Okay. And then you can increase the speed or decrease the speed right here. All right. And of course, this has um, dynamic radar cruise control. Okay. Next, we're going to move over to the newly redesigned MBUX infotainment system. Okay, so this is a beautiful system. I, I just I love the way when you sit in the car, it's actually slanted towards the driver. It's not straight up and down, and and I really like that. It, I think it'll cause less um, glare on the screen. So it's an 11.9 inch screen, and again, it has the new MBUX uh, software in it, and it, it's really nice. Now, in, in case you ever get one and you decide, well, I don't like I want the traditional just click and hold on the home button and it changes back to the gives gives you the traditional look doesn't change back it gives you the traditional look um, so that that is a neat feature now it does have wireless Apple CarPlay wireless Android Auto Bluetooth uh, Wi-Fi hotspot um, AM and FM radio and Sirius XM your home button of course is right down here and then you have shortcuts for uh, changing the media right here. And then you have a back button if you're in something. Down here, this part will stay here. This is your climate control system. And it has most of the buttons there. Um, what it doesn't have is your sync. And you have to go in the climate menu for that. And then you can sync because this is dual zone uh, climate control. All right, now while I'm in there, let me show you this. You've got driver and passenger controls, and this one has four functions. So you can increase the temp, decrease the temp, uh, decrease the fan speed, or increase the fan speed. This one only has two settings. It just changes the temperature. All right, otherwise, everything is pretty much right there. All right, so... Uh, right on the front of the screen, you get your driver profile if you want to set that up. I can't set that up right now. I can't walk you through that, but it, it just follow the on-screen instructions. You can search right from here to find something. This button here will take you to uh, favorites. So let's start. So we're going to start with the phone for a minute. I don't have a, a device connected, and this is I'm going to connect via Bluetooth first. So what you want to do is I just clicked on the phone and I'm going to go on my phone. And before I click anything else on the screen, I'm going to go to Bluetooth, make sure it's turned on, scroll to the bottom of the list and then hit connect. Now, I am going to say connect new device and hands free MBUX 85217 appears on my phone. I'm going to click on my phone there. I'm going to confirm that code is the same and it asked me if I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync. I'm saying don't allow, but if this is your car, you definitely want to do that. Now, um, it is also asking my, uh, on my phone if I want to allow uh, CarPlay to work with my iPhone when it's locked. I'm going to say not now. Okay, that should mean that I'm connected via Bluetooth and not uh, Apple CarPlay and you could do the same with Android Auto. All right, so for instance if I went to contacts It's not going to pull up anything. 
because I didn't allow it to sync. I can look at a call list, missed calls. I can look at favorites. Now down here, that's just that's under context. Under um, down here, you've got of course your keypad. Okay, you have got your different devices. Now right now, mine's set up only to work with phone. I can click there and say I want to also work with Bluetooth media. Okay, I can go back in here and I can say, yep, I want to look at my devices here and then I want to turn that feature back off, which I don't. I'm just going to leave it there. While I'm here, let me just point out that if I click on the three dots, this is where I disconnect, delete the device, um, or if I look at volume, reception volume and transmission volume, I can adjust both of those right here. Okay, let me go back here. Um, if I go down to, let's see, let's go back one more here to, to the phone here. Okay, this is text messaging. It's straight out on my phone because I have it blocked on my phone for use in a car. Um, but you can do that and then you can text through uh, voice command. Um, now, settings right here, again, brings you up to contacts, disconnect, and a message display on or off. Now, message display is going to allow you when you get a call or something to have it show up. So you definitely would want that on. Okay, so that's phone uh, via Bluetooth. Okay, I'm gonna go back to home. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how to, what it's gonna look like with Apple CarPlay, but these are shortcuts right here. This one right here is just to um, make a quick click to get into your call list. Okay. All right, let's take a look at radio. There's going to be two categories of audio. One will be radio, which is AM, FM, and Sirius XM. And then there'll be media, um, and that's things like um, USB, um, that kind of stuff. So it's different from radio. But so common questions are how do I tune, how do I save a favorite, and how do I adjust the sound settings? So first of all, to tune, you're just going to scroll right through here. Okay, real nice and easy. If you want to search, you can click here and you can type in a station list. Okay, search station list. I can look at all sources. I can look at just favorites. I can look at Sirius XM, FM, or AM. Okay, uh, and if I'm on station list, then I can just go like this. So, works the same on all of these. All right, let's get the back button. Okay, you can turn HD radio on and off right here. Okay, so that's how you're going to tune. If you want to stay, uh, make a favorite, you're just going to click on the star right there, and you see it actually pulls it up and puts it in favorites. Now, if I go to favorites, there I go, and this is my this these are my favorites that have been saved. So there's the one I made as a favorite. If I want to take it out of favorites, like delete it, you just simply while you're in favorites, click on the star, and it takes it right out. Okay. So let's talk about then how do you adjust the sound settings. So if I go in here, you've got for under equalizer, you can do bass, mid, and treble. And again, it's just a click. Okay? And if I go into balance and fader, I get similar controls here. Just rotate them around with your finger. Loudness normalization. Okay. So um, as your car goes faster, the music plays a little louder. As it goes slower, it plays a little softer. It's all meant to make the sound sound completely even throughout your whole trip and you have you can turn that off you can set it to low medium or high so it, it is a little more sensitive at high than it is at low okay so let's just go back to home here okay so that's the radio now you do again have shortcuts right underneath it and if I click the volume button I can adjust it real quick right there but although you got the slider right here so um, and then if I go into settings it takes me to that same spot that I was at so those are just shortcuts uh, all right, let's go back to home, media. Now, right now I'm connected via Bluetooth, so I get Bluetooth right here. And I can, of course, um, look at my playlist, current playlist, there's not a lot there. I can look at this, I can look at artists, okay? So lots of things you can do just connected via Bluetooth. Now. If I go up here, if I had a USB installed, it would uh, show me that content. Okay. So now, if I click on smartphone, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect a new device. 
Um, here, I'm gonna accept and start Apple CarPlay. Here's Apple CarPlay. Now, I love it how it's made larger, and you know you still got your climate controls, but it's a much larger screen than than it would have to be. Um, so I really like that. Now, the way it works is you, these are all the apps from my phone that work with uh, the car system. You may have other apps. But I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, I've got Waze navigation. I have got Google Maps and Apple Maps. So almost any navigation uh, app you have on your phone it will work. Music, you know, I've got Amazon Music. Um, I have got, of course, Apple News there, Apple Music. I've got uh, NPR. I've got uh, Sirius XM. I got Pandora. All those will work right there. These ones here are your most recently used things on your phone. Now, I want to show you something interesting here. If you click on settings, you can go into paper, uh, wallpaper, and you can adjust the background. That's just a kind of a cool little thing. Go backwards here. Appearance. Okay, you can have automatic, always dark, or show dark maps. Suggestions and dashboard just means it'll show up. Uh, and then show album art. So those are just some settings that that you can make um, right in Apple CarPlay. So that's just really cool. Uh, and then of course you can text from it. You can make uh, if you make a if you use Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth phone won't show up, and this is what it looks like. So you got your favorites, recents, contacts. Of course you got a keypad and voicemail. And and then of course if if you get a text, it's going to say it'll pop up a message. You click on it once. Everything else is done by voice command, which is really really cool. Uh, if I click on this button here, get back to the screen, I get back to this screen, if I click it again, I get to a split screen. You'll notice that I, because of the way it's uh, set up and I got a larger screen, I've got four buttons. I got a map, I got media, I've got a home button that I can program, and, the, and uh, this happens to be Apple Maps, and then I've got um, a calendar reminder. Okay, so that is just really cool. And if I click on the map or the media, they'll become a large screen. So that is Apple CarPlay. Now, every time I get into the car, it's going to automatically go to Apple CarPlay. And if you had set up Android Auto, it would do the same thing. So let's get out of there. All right. So now if I go over here, I can look at apps. Okay, so you got the Mercedes Me app. Uh, you've got the browser. You can look at license info. And you can look at a gallery um, of pictures. There's nothing uh, available. Now, if you're if if you're in a collision or an accident or someone hits you, the car takes pictures, uh, and you can see uh, what what happened, which is really really cool. All right, I'm gonna go back again. Let's go to comfort. So under seat kinetics here, yeah, it doesn't have uh, massaging seats, but it does have seat kinetics, and what they're designed to do is just help keep you awake and alert while you're driving. Then we have ambient lighting. Okay, this is really cool in the car. This is where you adjust the, 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 the basic color, but you can also have multicolor, and then you can select a theme. And it, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's inside the air vents. It's down inside this piping right here. It's in the doors. Uh, it's underneath uh, the seats. It's just really, really nice. You can see on, under here, right here, what I'm talking about. Um, and you can even see the colors change as I do that. So that's really cool. You can change the brightness of it, and that's just, that's like links all the zones together. Or if you want to unlink them and make one area brighter and less uh, less bright, you can do that. And then you can have effects. When this is on, um, the if, if there's a car approaching and you're gonna open your door, uh, it'll, it'll glow red to, to warn you that there's someone coming. This is the one that makes all the air vents change color as you change the temperature. And then multicolor animation, uh, it just, the lights move and change and you can turn that on or off there. All right, let's go back. That was under comfort. So let's go to info. Now under info here, you've got three things, okay? You've got consumption. So you, get a, you can look at a 7.5 minute graph, 30 minute, 90 minute, or three hours. Okay. And if I go to vehicle, you can take a look at the use of the accelerator or the brake. Okay. If, and it tells you what mode you're in. All right. Under the engine here, this is really kind of cool. You get your pound feet of torque, get your horsepower, and you get your 
uh, boost pressure right here, along with your transmission temperature and your oil temperature. That's kind of a cool graphic. I love that. Okay, so that's right there. I'm going to hit back again. Go over to settings. Now, under settings, we're going to have uh, a few things here. you got tabs across the top that you can go into. And under assistance, okay, collision avoidance, um, here, here are the things that you have. You can have ESP off or on. Um, you can have active brake assist on. If you want to make some uh, adjustments on that, you can click the, the gear wheel. Then you can change it to early, medium, or late. Now, I, I, I would always leave it medium um, or early. Um, late, you're going to be closer to having an accident before it acts. So um, you kind of have to play with that and see it, how it actually acts in the real world to make sure that you adjust it for uh, what you're comfortable with. And then blind spot assist, you can turn it off or turn it on. And again, I would recommend keeping that on. Now, under there, under assistance, you can, the attention assist, that's what tells you if you're, the car thinks you're falling asleep and needs to take a break, okay? Uh, under camera, you can open the camera cover if you need to from there. And under parking, um, parking space in camera image in reverse, okay? So you can have that off or on. Usually you want that uh, on. Uh, I think that makes most sense to most people. But if you look at the picture and go, that doesn't make sense to me, that's where you would change that. You can set your warning tones here, the volume and the pitch, which is really cool because depending on your hearing, you may hear one of those pitches better than another. So I love it when they put that in when they change the pitch. All right, under vehicle, driving. You can turn manually shifting on or off. For comfort, easy entry exit feature. This will automatically position your seat and your steering wheel when you set your profile, uh, That's which is really cool. I can't do that right now because I don't have one uh, set. Occupant protection, belt adjustment. You'll want to leave that on because it automatically helps to pretension your, your seats and everything. All right, uh, under uh, open and close. All right, automatic door lock on or off, acoustic lock on or off, automatic mirror folding, block trunk access, you can turn that on, opening height limiter for the rear trunk, and then a standby mode. So lots and lots of things under there. Dynamic select, this is where you can individualize your driving mode. So um, you can say, always ask at the beginning, or if you turn that off, it'll go It'll go into whatever mode was last set, I believe. Okay, I'll turn that back on. So under drive, you can select eco, comfort, or sport. For steering, you can have comfort or sport. And for ESP, you can have comfort or sport. Okay, and those are your three settings there. All right, that's it for the vehicle. If we look under lights, headlamps, you can turn the daytime running lights on or off there. You can turn on locator lighting, so when you hit the key fob, all the lights come on. Um, interior lighting delay. You get in the car, you close the door, it's night. How long do you want the interior lights to stay on? Okay, and that is just on or off. It's not a preset time. You can't change that, but you can delay them. Exit lighting. Okay, so when you do that, uh, the exterior lights will stay on for from 15 seconds to 60 seconds or off, so you can get to the door and still have some light. Ambient light, if I go into here, I'm going to go back to that same system I already showed you. Okay, it's just another way to, to, to go in there. All right, under system. All right, under displays here, switch display on or off. And if I do the display off, it just turns it off and everything keeps functioning. If I hit system off, then everything stops. Your radio, navigation, your audio, all that kind of stuff. Graphical goodies is, is something the the engineers threw on, I think, on a, on a Friday. So if you turn it on, little little things will change with your screen on holidays. Like for instance, on Halloween, you might see little ghosts and goblins in your infotainment screen somewhere. Or if it's Christmas, you might be see Santa or reindeer. Uh, so if you don't like to see those little things, leave that on. You can change your units here to kilometers or miles just by clicking. And then you can have the additional speedometer, which if you turn off, Remember that I showed you in the driver's information screen that was that little kilometers per hour one? 
that's where that turns that on or off. You can change your language down here. Audio. Okay, now you can have the greeting tone. For Parktronic, you can change again the volume and the, 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 the pitch. For phone here, you can set your call volume, your ring volume. Voice output. Okay, this is for when the car talks to you. Voice guidance volume. Driving recommendations on or off when you're uh, during a call. Internet and Bluetooth. Okay, this is where you can set up the hotspot, manage Wi-Fi access. You can look at, you can protect your data by creating a pin. You can look at the time and the date and you can adjust that. Although, um, really the easiest way to do that is just by usually clicking right on there. And then you can go right into here. Okay, uh, software update, you can look at that. There's no updates available, but if you went into the settings here, you can say update automatically or only after confirmation. And if you have a PIN number, then only you can type it in because it'll ask you for the PIN number. So anyways, all right. And then of course you have a master reset. Let's go back to the home screen here. So this particular vehicle does not have uh, built-in navigation. But again, that's not a problem when you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and you can simply go ahead and do something like Google Maps. Um, okay, um, now down below the screen, I'm gonna go back to home again, just gonna show you a couple of other things. Um, under the modes here, if I click here, that was comfort, I can go to economy, and it tells you what everything is set for then. I can go to comfort, I can go to sport, or I can go to uh, individual, which is that I showed you where to customize that. So that's right there. Now let's talk about the cameras. So I'm just gonna put it in reverse for a minute. Fantastic 360 uh, surround camera system here. This blue line shows you when anything is close to the car and that's kind of where it dents out. There's probably a little branch next to us that's a little closer to the car and that's why you see that. Okay, You do have dynamic swivel guidelines and right now um, this is the rear camera but I can change it to the front camera. And in the front camera I don't get the dynamic guidelines in this one but I do in this one. You can see those front tire and rear tires. So you can see where, that, where your tire is going to travel. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just put it back into park for a minute. And I'm just going to hit the camera button. So in the front and rear view, you can use this button here to kind of give you a wider view. You can also go here and look at the left side of the car. You can look at the right side of the car. And then... You can turn auto on, okay, and that then should, when you're um, at speeds of like five miles an hour or less, you can, uh, the camera front, you know, like if you're in drive, the front camera will come on automatically. Uh, of course, it'll come automatically if you're in reverse, but mostly for being in drive when you pull into a parking lot and trying to park. Tap this, and this display comes up. This will turn, of course, your parking sensors front and rear off. You would want to leave those on, unless, for instance, you're towing something, okay? But that is a phenomenal view. I absolutely love that, and I love that front camera. Okay, right next to that, I've got a car icon. If I click on that, it's going to bring down a, a couple of things. So, um, ESP. I can turn that off from here if I want. But, again, that's kind of your traction control. You can just quickly turn on manually shifting. Um, you can turn off your sensors. You can turn off or on the interior motion sensors, tow away alarm, and the trunk blocked. And again, if the light is blue, it's on. And then you can go to all settings, okay? but we saw that when I went through that already. This is just a shortcut to the, ba the basic ones. All right, again, your uh, fingerprint sensor to get into your driver profile, a power button that's kind of shuts. You can just turn the display off. You notice that this stays right here. Tap the screen and it comes back on again. That's it for the infotainment screen and the driver's information screen on the newly redesigned 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.